Good evening, Temple Baptist Church. Just before Dennis comes up and uh, brings us the message tonight, he's asked me to uh, do a scripture reading. And we thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for logging on and, uh, and joining us tonight via live stream. Um, we're going to be reading Psalm 37 verses 1 through to 15. Psalm 37 verses 1 through to 15. And once I've read that, I'll hand it over to Brother Dennis and, uh, and he'll bring the message tonight. So if you turn your Bibles to Psalm 37, we'll read up to verse 15. It says, Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while and, a, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth evil against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow, they bent their bow, to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Um, good to come here tonight and sort of just praise the Lord's name and sort of give him the glory. It's the first time I've been here for a while, and it's good to be here. Um, that Psalms 37 that you heard Jeremy, um, Jamie just sort of read, what a wonderful Psalms. And it's just sort of explain, you know, about sort of today's with our lives, you know, with the COVID-19 and other things going on. You know, you read that Psalms and it just give you courage and it give you understanding and it strengthen your faith. And it talks about the evil doers and the wicked and, you know, the you know, unrighteous, what they do to sort of men of sort of good faith. And we just need to sort of, you know, sometimes we'll worry, but the scripture, everything that we worry about, the scriptures there, the Lord's got that in the scriptures to sort of support us and just give us a joy and give us a foothold so we don't worry so much. Um, let us pray for now. Heavenly Father, tonight we just thank for your many blessings, Lord. We just thank you can come here and praise your holy name, Lord. We thank for Brother Jamie for being here tonight, Lord, to sort of do the camera and just sort of, um, it's an encouragement, Jamie, to me to, you know, see what he's been doing recently, especially the Friday prayers, Lord. Lord, we pray, oh Lord, for, you know, the situation at the moment with the COVID still. We pray for, you know, nurses and see, doctors and all those sort of, who are sort of in the hospital supporting these people. We see a lot of loved ones sort of dying, sort of children, fathers, mothers. And, you know, there's empty spaces around tables at the moment, Lord. And I just pray for these people who are sort of supporting them, the doctors and the nurses. You know, sometimes they're working sort of 12 hour shift, Lord, and it's just non-stop sometimes. Be with them and guide them. Let your wisdom and knowledge be with them. Strengthen them, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I just thank you now as I go through the scripture. Be with me. Give me the knowledge and wisdom I need to sort of go to these scriptures and just sort of let your words come forth. I just thank you now, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So what I wanted to talk about tonight is sort of um, the spirit of truth and the, you know, the, the lies, you know, the scripture tells us, um, you know, sort of read, you know, if you read through it, Lord tell it is going to be a time where man's going to be, you know, treat truth as lie and lie as truth. And you see that today, all over the world, you know, you see things are changing and sort of, you know, government is sort of springing up and you got this, you know, 
populists or popular, or whatever they call it, where these people are coming in and sort of, you know, teaching all these things and sort of man sort of believe in it. And it's a shame because we got some Christians who's embedded in it as well. And what's so strange about it, sometimes as Christians, we can get caught up with the word, you know, the world sort of philosophy, the world politics, the world ways, we don't realize in it, we can be embedded in it. And that's why the Lord tells us in scripture, it says, you know, be careful in nothing, he never gives, everything gives thanks, but he always warn you, be sober, be vigilant with all what's happening at the moment. He says, wake up, stop being asleep. And at the moment, we, some of us, we can be sleeping through, you know, what's going on in the world. If you look at scriptures, they tell you we're in the last times and we see the world deteriorating. Things are deteriorating. Churches have compromised, you know, with what's happening at the moment. Lord tell you about in, in Revelation, the first um, three, three chapters in Revelation talks about the different churches and what is going on and the state of the churches. And we see churches today where it's gone lukewarm. The churches who are sort of rich and don't care about the Lord anymore. You know, as Christians, sometimes we can become sort of judgmental. We don't realize in it, you know. We, you know, the Lord talk about sort of compassion. He's compassionate. In sort of, um, in, in, um, I need to sort of slow down. But in, in, the, in scripture itself, it talks about the fruit of the spirit. It talks about love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. He tell you against such, there's no law. There's no law. And sometimes we seem to sort of forget about these things. And we, sometimes we, as Christians, we need to go back to basic and get into God's word. It, it tells you sometimes, you know, we sort of, as Christ, how can I say, as Christians, we can grow up to a point where we sort of know the scriptures and we teach the scriptures, but sometimes we can forget the basic. And, you know, our God is a God of love. There's no other God that mentioned in the world that's, that is love. He tell us his love. John 3, 16, he tell you, you know, his love, it's, you know, his only son, Jesus Christ, he sent down to die for us because of his love for us. And, and that's amazing that, you know, his only son. Can you think of any other gods? There's no other gods that the Christian sort of, you know, doctrine is all about God's love. It cares for us, you know. He wouldn't have said his own son. And as Christians, we need to have that love because as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we can become judgmental. Sometimes we can get about the basic and need to be, we need to be empathic. We need to be understanding. And sometimes we get these, we forgot these basic about being understanding, you know, about our brother or our sisters. Sometimes a brother might not come to church, but that does mean that, you know, they're not reading the Bible or they're studying. It might be for some reason. And sometimes we can sort of get caught up about the sort of the basics of the little stuff. And we forgot about the, you know, the great, you know, the stuff that's sort of dangerous with what's preaching at the moment, with the, with the world itself, with the politics itself, we get caught up into. And it tells us, touch not, taste not, the Lord Jesus Christ tell us, touch not, taste not any of the world situation. In John 1, 4, 6, John 1, 4, 6, it talks about, we know it, God, we hear it us. The righteous, we are, we, we are the righteous, we are of God. He that know it, God, know it not, you know, righteousness. Hereby we know him that is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of truth. In John 4, 6, in John 4, 6, I'm away the truth, the life. No one cometh to be thought about by me. He is the way, uh, yes, it tells us there. He is the truth, he is the only truth, not man's truth. And he's life, you know, he is life. We gotta sort of follow God's word. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No, in, in Acts 4.12 4, it said, neither is the salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 
In 1 Timothy 2, 5, it said, there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There's no one else, not man. Um, I was listening to sort of Brother Leonard this morning, and Brother Leonard sort of, he was talking about sort of Moses, and Moses sort of, you know, grew up in, in Egypt with the kings. He had all this prestige. But Moses, he, he knew who he was and who he was for, and he turned away from all that sort of prestige. You know, it could have been sort of, you know, a king had people bowing to him, living the life, you know, of sort of, you know, you know, people sort of bowing down, you know, men sort of praising him, but he turned away from that for his own people after God called him. And can you imagine all the prestige that's turned away? But the trouble with prestige nowadays, it's only for a small time. It's, it doesn't last. It does not last at all. It's only for a small time. And you, you know, look, you look at the sort of times, time fly by, when you get to my age, it's time flies by. <laughs> Jamie's laughing there at me. It's, it seems short. This week, last week, I don't know what happened to sort of last week. It just sort of disappeared complete. And I can't remember what happened last week. You know, my job role sort of uh, involves sort of um, supporting people. And it's, it's, it's a strange job because nobody wants to do this job. And the Lord seems to have sort of put me into this job because it involves sort of, you know, people who lose a life within the company and sort of supporting them. And um, it's a difficult job and it's sort of mentally sort of draining, but that's, that's where the Lord wants me. And I, I saw, see different people, you know, all around the country because I cover all the country in the job, but I try not to sort of judge anyone. I support everyone the same. You know, but I, but I try to show myself as well. God's sort of, how can I put it? It's characteristic in me, and it's, and it's important. And that's how I'm able to sort of do the job because not because of myself, because God, you know, support me because I know Him. You know, Job said, "I know that my Redeemer liveth, and He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth." And it's knowing Christ that sort of got, because as I said, it's been busy, it's been crazy. You cannot ask my wife, you know, the last, beginning of January, I was getting phone call every day with someone who had passed away. And I've, I've got to be sort of strong to sort of support those family. But I can only do it, not in my strength, but sort of God's strength. And that's why I, I see sort of sometime, I've been the last sort of two years, and I see where well, as, as Christians, we get growing more into the world. We're embedded more into the world. We've embedded more into the sort of lies. And, I, and what I'm saying is, we don't see it. I, even myself, you know, it tell us there's none righteous, not one. But sometimes we can get righteous by a Christian. We see someone or we see them doing something. And all of a sudden we sort of judge them because of what they do. The Lord doesn't do that, the, the Lord doesn't do that for us. He does not judge us. He's, you know, he sent his only son to die for us because he loved us so much. So shouldn't we be showing these characteristics as well, what the Lord that is love? It's, 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 it's just amazing sometimes. He says, search the scriptures. You know, we need to sort of search the scriptures more, study more. He says, study to show thyself a fruit unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. And we, we seem to be missing that point because we don't, people don't know what is truth anymore. And we're here as ambassadors of God, of Christ. And we're doing an ambassador's role, you know, supporting, you know, people who are sort of struggling at the moment. With this COVID-19, as Christians, we've got an opportunity. God's given us an opportunity to sort of show his word, show his love, show his grace, you know. He's, he's given us that, and we need to sort of we need to sort of show it. We need to stop judging. Don't worry about the little things. Look at the big things. He's called us to sort of you know love all men. You know he said you know in sort of scriptures in Matthew there he says um, you know love the Lord our God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and he says and secondly love thy neighbor as thyself. You know. What does it mean, love thy neighbor as thyself? Is, is he just sort of joking? Is he just sort of saying that? His way is not our way, but love thy neighbor. I said, what, what mighty that is, 
to love our neighbors as ourselves. Can we do that as Christians? Love our neighbors as ourselves. It's, it's an amazing sort of, and it says, and, and all these too hang the commandments. So what he said, it's very important that we sort of love thy neighbor as ourself. But how oh, can we love our neighbors ourselves if we, we, we sort of keep judging? You know, all men are not the same. We're all sort of different. In God's eye, we are sort of individual. But sometimes we've got to be careful don't group people into the same groups. You know, I sort of, um, you know, work at sort of JLR. And I've seen over the years where every sort of couple of years, we sort of bring these new sets of values for the community so people can look and see this is what we do, that which is what we stand for. But after two years or 12 months, those values forget and they do, do a set another set of values and they do another set of values. But God's words never change. It never change. It's still the same, you know. We should never change, you know. This church, I, I love this church because I know it's, it's a Bible preaching church. And, you know, Leonard, you know, New Life, it's a Bible printed church. But a lot of church out there have compromised so much. It's just amazing. God isn't in the church anymore. And what is it? It's to sort of please men. It's, it's strange because, you know, great, great nations, you know, gone past was founded on the foundation of the Lord but it's not there anymore. It's deteriorate and it's still deteriorating more completely. There's no, these nations have, you know, fall, fall apart. And sometimes, you know, as Christians, and I've sort of seen it, I've heard it. Sometimes we'll, like, like Eve, you know, Adam, you know, in the Bible, we all sort of point the finger at others. Eve said, it, you know, it was a, it was a serpent who sort of got me to eat. And Adam said, it wasn't my fault, it's the woman you got me, you know? And we're still doing the same today. Things hasn't changed today. We blame others for our failing. If we, if we don't sort of like someone and we sort of, they don't do what we do, then we point the finger. But Jesus said, that's not so. We should be getting down our knees and praying for that person. How many times I heard, well, it was his fault, or it was that politician's fault, yeah? But you should be praying for them. That's what God said, pray for man's soul. We should be sort of praying for man's soul. You know, what, what's our commission? You know, it's, it's, it's Matthew 28. It's go all into the world, teach in all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things, whatsoever command you. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. He's with us. You know, I was, I, this afternoon I was sort of listened to Pastor Dan Weeks, and he was talking about sort of Christ. He's created all things. There's nothing created that, you know, he didn't create. All things created by him. He's maintaining all things now. You know, all this sort of populist things that are coming up. They always say, if you know, religion caused war. But if you think about it, and people sort of actually check out the facts, it's evolution that's caused wars, you know? It's evolution that's called wars. It's, it's, it's not religion. It's men greed that caused wars. It's not religion. You see men sort of, you know, at the moment you see all these little small wars going around the world. And us as sort of Western, we don't care. We sort of start off some of the, you know, the wars and think we sort of know best. But then we leave things in a state, a total mess, you know. You see children dying all over the world. Children in Africa, that area, South America. But we just ignore these things. We should be praying for these people, you know. God sort of, you know, suffered the little children to come unto me, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. We should care about all children, not just for ourselves. It's, it's, there's, it's get to a point now where it's, it's self first, you know. We're looking after sort of self first. And that's what the world is, selfish. They'll think of their own self. You know, we either can trust God or we've got to trust man. Who, who do you trust? I've, I've told you this and it's, it's, it's quite serious. If you trust, man, trust in man and not in God, 
you're going to be disappointed if you trust in man. You're going to be dis disappointed. You're going to be distressed if you trust in man. You're going to be angered. Danny, Dan, Dan, Brother Danny spoke about sort of anger this morning. And you're going to get angry when you trust in man. And that anger is going to cause problems, not just for you, but the people around you. We, we shouldn't be getting angry. I'm not going to say, you know, you know, you can't get angry because of righteousness. And, you know, the Lord, you know, you know, people sort of devalue the, the Bible. But then again, that, that's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is in Matthew 28 as ambassador. It's to preach the word. It's going to be instant in season, out of season. Rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when that endure so on doctrine. For after their own lust shall they eat to themselves, teachers having each ears. Second Corinthians 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 4. You know, the, the fables already started. It says it in the scripture, but that started way back. People listen to fables. They listen to sort of lies. And it's, it's just foolishness sometimes. And when they find out that they trust in mad and listen to this foolish, it's too late. You know, it's too late. You know, at the moment, um, the big thing is sort of um, going on at the moment is this thing about sort of, you know, the world and sort of, you know, the ice cap and, you know, everything are falling apart. But they should be worried about the souls, you know. You can say, tell, tell us in scripture, we can gain the whole world, all these riches, but lose your own soul. You know, we forgot about sort of, um, you know, the good Samaritan, you know, when Jesus said, you know, who, who is good? Who is good when you think about it? Man, man is not good. I'm not good. He said, all of sin and come short of the glory of God. He said, there's none righteous. No, not one. I know that I'm not righteous. But I know why. Because, you know, I can sort of be driving the car and sort of someone upset me or cut me up. And I lose it. You know, I'm not sort of infallible to sort of things like that. I remember a couple of years ago, I was waiting for hours. It was a traffic and it was about two hours wait. And I got to the junction, I was just gonna go across and a chap cut me up completely. And I raced up to him and he wind his window down and I said, I apologize, brother. And there's nothing I could do. All I could say, is, it's all right, mate. <laughs> and it just shows you, if we sort of were like that, although it sort of cut me up and sort of, you know, say, are you, are you doing brother or sister? Are you okay? I apologize. Can imagine the sort of reaction you know you'd so, you would sort of get it's the same with sort of weaknessing you know you gotta have some understanding sort of when you're weaknessing you can't just sort of go out and said you're a sinner you know you must come to know i know john the baptist used to sort of you know john the baptist he it was a it was a it was a good man you know the lord talked about sort of john the baptist but you, you can't do that. You need to sort of be empathic and understanding. The best way is to sort of tell them your story. Tell them how you got sort of saved. You know, tell them how the Lord sort of, you know, is carrying you at the moment, like he's carrying me. You know, I've, I've had some sort of difficult times sort of recently, but I know he's carrying me. When difficulties come on, I get into the scripture and sort of read his words. It's, it's you know, it's, it's wonderful words. I said I was listening to Brother Dan this afternoon and, you know, his sort of creation, his love for us, his son dying on the cross for us, and yet he still loves us. All that sin, but yet he still, he still loves us. Can any other sort of, you know, religion or whatever say that about their God? As I said, there's just one God and one mediator between God and man, the Lord Christ Jesus. You know, it's, it's, it's wonderful sometimes. As I said, as when um, Jamie read that scripture, I just felt wonderful. And I, I shiver because of the scriptures, because of the love that Christ have, have for us. And sometimes I find it difficult to understand why sort of some of the things are happening at the moment. And all Christians have caught up into sort of the world sort of system, the world philosophy, repeating myself again, the world understanding. You know, the, the, at the moment, the world, you know, the, the government are getting into sort of the schools and 
you know, the teaching sort of, the putting sort of policies in where you're going to teach the kids certain things, yeah? But they haven't, they're not teaching them about sort of love. There's no love there. It, it, at sort of work, you know, they put in policies and procedures so everyone's sort of equal. But it won't make any difference unless you have love in it. God's love's got to be in that. You know, they said, love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Christian, the love of, if you don't love the, you know, the love of the Father is not in you. We, we forgot those basics. Why, why have we got those basics? Because we've caught up with the world. You know, we care about the world politics more than being an ambassador for Christ. Oh, we need to sort of wake up. You know, if you're asleep, wake up. You know, be sober, be vigilant, the scripture tell us. Study the scripture, search the scripture, you know. Look, look, look at Paul himself, Paul, you know, Paul the Apostles, you know. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who should deliver from the body of this dead? You know, Paul said he was least of the apostle. Although sort of Christ had sort of win him over and used Christ, Paul in a mighty, mighty way. He still considered himself at least as the apostle. He admitted that um, when he tried to do the things that he should do, he doesn't. But he do the opposite because the sin that is in him, within, me, within him, there's, there's still sin in us. You know, all of us is, you know, we're, we're still sinners. It's but by the grace of God that's sort of keeping us going. And what a, you know, what a wonderful grace. And, and the spirit is, you know, when, when we become sort of saved, you know, that spirit come and dwell in our fleshy heart. And I said, you know, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We should be walking the spirit at all time. You know, I, I, I think some, sometimes we try to do things by ourselves, and we forgot that God sent the Holy Spirit to, you know, give us those words, support us, consider us. He's tell us he'll send a comforter. You know, he said to his disciple, if I don't go, then the comforter will not sort of come. You know, I get as well, you, you know, as a sort of congregation, there's no one here tonight apart from my, me, me and Jamie. Pastor Chris always tell us, search the scriptures. When he's preaching, he said, look in the scriptures and make sure, you know, what he's preaching. Read it for ourselves. And we won't sort of, not, you know, say, you know, that is sort of, you know, rubbish or is preaching the wrong thing. It's important to know the scriptures because if you go to another church and they're preaching, you can tell straight away that they've compromised God's scriptures. People, people out there, it's, it's by our God, it's by Christ only. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one come at the Father but by him. Study to show that it's ever proven unto God, it tells us. You know, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be an ambassador of Christ, but it's, it's an important thing. It's an important, how can I put it, duty that he's given us to be an ambassador. You look at all the sort of ambassadors around the world, sort of different countries, and they're there for a reason, to represent their country. We're here to sort of represent the Lord Jesus Christ who's died for us, took our sin on the cross, and by his blood has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. God look at us, you know, he doesn't see our sin because of his son, Jesus Christ. You know, but we, we're still this sort of, um, you know, one day we, will, we, we, we sort of will be to him, but we're gonna throw off this sort of mortal and we shall put on this immortal flesh you know, as, as I said, you know, we, we're caught up too much in the world. Some of us, because we've caught up so much, we, we can't escape. 
We, we, we cannot escape it. We need to sort of go back to sort of basic. We need to think what we're preaching. Sometimes we need, you know, Brother mentioned this, Brother Donnie mentioned this song. Sometimes we need to think what we're saying. You know, we get caught when sometimes we don't realize what we're saying because there's people listening. There's young Christians who are sort of listening to what we're saying and they're taking it in and they're believing it's, it's right and it's not right. We, 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 we sort of letting that young Christian down. We need to sort of be careful what we're saying as um, Brother Nelson mentioned this morning. Think before we sort of speak. You talk about, you know, the, the tongue itself. You know, it's talk about the ships or the, you know, controlled by a little lamb and sort of, you know, the ask the dung. But the tongue, no one can sort of control it. I repeat again, it's a, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one come at the Father but by me. One thing that I've, I've, I've noticed as well is that, you know, we see what's happening across the world. We see the world deteriorating. We see sort of more sort of lies and people doesn't know what to believe anymore, you know. And how can I put it? Sometimes we try to do something about it. As, as Christians, we try to sort of do God's work. He didn't tell us to do that work. He's mighty, he's powerful, he's all seen. He knows everything that's going on. We're not here to do his work. We're in Matthew 28. We need to preach the word, being sent in season out of season. Sometimes we forget our position. And the problem is, once we start to do the Lord's work, we don't just get ourselves in trouble, we get others in trouble. Just look at Abraham and sort of Sarah. The Lord promised them a seed, but they decided that to give, um, Sarah decided to give it, uh, Agar to Abraham. So, made a mistake there. All sort of great men in the Bible have sort of made me say, David, you know, he's adultery, but the Lord still loved him because he repented. Solomon, he had all the sort of wisdom and knowledge, all the riches, but it, 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 it changed him because of the riches, because he got caught up all that privilege God gave him. Israel, you know, Israel is God's people. They were the chosen people. They're still the chosen people, by the way, because it's telling Romans 11, 16, so all Israel shall be saved. As written, they shall come out of Zion, a deliverer, and turn away ungodliness from, you know, Israel. But they're still the chosen people. But can you imagine from when they came out of the promised land, what the Lord has done for them, and how many times they've turned back and turned away, turned back and turned away. And it even got to a point where sort of through scriptures where Israel, you know, they had good kings, they had bad things, good kings, bad things who turned away from the Lord. And sometimes some of the kings that tried to intervene, didn't they? Look at, look at um, the, the Saul, you know. The pe people chose them. They all wanted the king, so give, God gave them what they wanted. And, and what happened? He put a lot of burden on them, the king. And they suffered because of it. And because it, it was king, then it turned against God. He wanted to do his own thing again. Think so. And whenever you try to do your own thing, you cause a problem, don't you? You, you turn away from God and think, well, you know, I, can, I think I can do this thing. And you, you sort of try to make it right. You try to twist scriptures to make it looks like, well, I'm doing it for God. No, you're not doing it for God. God's all powerful. He does need you to, you know, do his work for him. He doesn't. You need you to do his work for him at all. He can sort of do that himself. He's give us a mission, and that mission is to preach the word. He said, because I love the world, we should love others. He, God doesn't sort of judge. If he was judged, he wouldn't have died for all the world. And he said, everyone in the world, you know, his son died for. 
be vigilant, be sober. You know, we need to wake up to sort of wake up to these things. You know, there's a darkness and there's a light. And Jesus said it is the light of the world. He said, walk in the light as him and as he is in the light. And we'll have fellowship one with another. Love not the world again. You know, I, I got keep repeating, love not the world, it tells us. And that is, it, it's so important, you know, that's love that the world. And back to sort of love thy neighbor as thyself. We need to sort of remember, because he said, and these two, the commandments, and love the God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, the, the, the rich man said, who is thy neighbor? And he told him about this, you know, he spoke about the sort of, you know, the good Samaritan. But, but all that is sort of ignore this man after he was robbed and beaten. But it, it was the man who not, did not know God who sort of supported him. And that's, that's a one, that's what wonderful sort of, you know, scriptures there explaining who is thy neighbor. You know, we, we got, even myself, we got sort of neighbors we don't even sort of speak to. You know, drop, drop, a, drop a scriptures through the, through, through the door. We got an opportunity, I know sort of we've lost um, people here due to sort of COVID as well. You know, when this sort of is sort of clear enough, it might not clear, but you know, it might can continue, you know, like the common sort of flu, although this isn't a common flu, but we need to sort of reach out to those people. You know, there's Margaret, there's Maureen, Rita. You know, we, we need to reach out, you know. When we sort of talk about heroes, some people got, you know, got sort of footballers, they got actress, actors, but um, looking back, Maureen was a sort of, um, you know, a fan of mine. You know, she was my hero. Because Maureen went, you know, the only thing she feared was sort of, you know, losing her factor, her physical health. But she, she loved God, you know, she loved God. And she sort of, she, she, you know, she put it into action. And now she went to Romania and sort of places like that you know, to support children, support sort of churches across there. You know, she used to walk backwards and forwards to sort of, you know, church. She supported me, you know, when I sort of first had a breakdown, you know, mental health. None of us is sort of immune from mental health. And she, she, she supported me 120%. And sort of people like that, they're, they're my heroes. Who have we got sort of as heroes today? You know, I know the song, you know, that we said, Christ live it in me. That's what, that's what we need to sort of, you know, you know, singing some of that, Christ live it in me. What a friend we have in Jesus. Let's carry on. I gotta watch, I gotta watch my time, Jamie, so keep me on track. <laughs> so he says, when the comforter shall come, who will send you, who will send by the Father, even the spirit of truth will proceed from the Father, he shall testify of me. So it is a, it's, it's truth. It's not what man's telling you today. God is the only truth. The spirit of truth would leave you inconsistent if with God's word. We need to be consistent with God's word. We need not to sort of, sort of twist it because we're caught up in the world. Touch not, taste not. And there's, there's a lot of sort of evangelists who have sort of, you know, the ones on TV who have changed God's word. They've caught up in the world. You know, in, in um, Romans 16, 17, he said, I wish for our brethren, mark them which cause division and offense, contrary to the doctrine we have learned, and avoid them 
avoid them, it says. Christians, you know, sometimes we sort of look around for other churches or we're trying to get extra sort of, you know, study from our scripture by listening to other pastors. You don't have to sort of go anywhere else. You can hear all the scriptures here. You got the meat of the scriptures here. Be careful if you sort of go on sort of television and, and listening to these sort of preachers. They've compromised. They've caught up into the world with riches. They like to send you money so they can pray for you. You don't, you don't need a man to pray for you. When Jesus died on the cross and that veil was sort of wrenched, anyone can come unto him. He says, come unto me, you that are labor and ever lay, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke up in you and learn of me. From me can lowly not, and you shall find rest in your soul. For what? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. God burden is light. Men burden leads to the distress, anger. And when you're angry, then you distress others next to you. You cause others to, sort of, to sin. You lose your, how can I put it? That righteousness that God has given you by getting angry because of something that's happening in the world. Remember, the Lord is in control of everything. So you don't need to be getting angry. The Lord is in control. And it's not a righteous anger because it, it, it set everything in motion. Everything is in motion with the Lord. You don't need to sort of intervene for it on his behalf. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He sees everything that's going on. You know, sometimes, you, you know, you look at sort of today and what's going on, and the devil must be sitting back and saying, well, I don't need to do anything here. Man's sort of just destroying himself. You know, it, 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 the crucifix tells us to watch because he's a roaring lion, but I don't think he needs to do that. He's just looking at man sort of destroying himself because they've caught up in the things of the world. The same thing the Lord said, touch not, taste not. We, we're caught up into it. And so the devil, he, he's not all seen or all powerful like the Lord, but he's probably saying, well, I can just sit back, you know, fall my arm and watch them destroy themselves. And that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna destroy themselves. You know, through the sort of Bible sort of times, you see nations that sort of rise up. And the, the Lord sort of supports some of these nations, even sort of, you know, nations that, you know, they weren't sort of Christian, they weren't sort of Israel, the chosen ones, but they saw the Lord raise them up. But eventually, they destroy all these countries, sort of, the fall eventually. And it's no difference today. If you're not going by the Lord, or sort of follow his way, these nations, which was built upon the Lord, foundation of faith, it will fall eventually. And the trouble is, it's crumbling already. It's something that we cannot stop because the Lord's state is gonna crumble. You know, it's even one, as he said, even the elect's sake, you know, will fall for these sort of tricks and fable. The elect's sake. Don't let you as sort of Christians who sort of know the Bible think that you sort of, you can sort of, you know, escape from what's going on, that you cannot fall. He said, let him that think it is stand there. Take heed lest he fall. But then he said, there's no temptation to take you, but that's just as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you with tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may have to bear it. He said you will fall if you don't sort of be careful, but he's given you a way to escape. But the only way you're going to escape is, is through scriptures, through his word, through his love, through his guidance, through his policies and procedures, not man policies and procedures. God policies and procedures and word never change, but we change it to sort of fit the world philosophy. It should be at the way around. We should be sort of 
change the word as to fit God's word. All these countries are sort of falling because they're trying to sort of do things in their own way. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 said, In all thy ways that knowledge many shall direct thy path. You get a following, walk in the light as he is in the light. And you'll have fellowship one with another. These scriptures repeat itself over and over again, all through from Genesis to Revelation. It tells you of Christ coming. And it tells you what's going to happen because of sin. We need to sort of be, be careful of these things. Touch not, taste not. Mark them which cause division and offense, contrary to the doctrine of learning, and avoid them, avoid them. Walk in the light as he is in the light. He said, search the scriptures and known again and see where your salvation are. Search the scriptures over and over again, Paul, search the scriptures. If you follow men, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be distressed. And when, once you sort of district, you can't blame anyone unless you said because you weren't following scriptures. You weren't loving your brothers and sisters. It tells us if anyone loves not his brother, he's a murderer. That's, that's, a, that's a strong scripture. If anyone loves not the brother, you know, our sisters, you're a murderer. You know, just, 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 just to finish off, he says, love not the world, neither things in the world. If anyone love the world, love the Father is not in him. Think of these things. What things you're on about, what, is, what things there is on about when he said think in these things. The world, the lust thereof, covetousness, riches, Those three, lust of flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, will bring man down. And you see that um, going around now with all the sort of what's going on in the two years, with all government chain in your breakfast, it's always lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Christian, we cannot be too prideful. We should not be too judgmental. We need to get back and sort of be empathic to our brother, understanding, love, God's love. He said, he that love it not, know it not God. Mm. Heavenly Father, we just thank for your many blessings, Lord. We thank for your grace. We thank you for your love, Lord Jesus Christ. And we know without your love, we're nothing. Without your grace, we're nothing. Without your son, your son dying for us on the cross, we're nothing, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, once again, I just sort of pray for those who are struggling at the moment. There's a lot of people out there. Once again, I pray for the doctors, the nurses, you know, all those who are sort of supporting at the moment, you know, with these ones who have lost loved ones. May we be a church, Lord Jesus Christ, of love and grace and understanding and be empathic to others. May you bless us now until sort of we meet again. For your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.